fly, Nelly fly, bring the broom along. We'll sweep the kitchen clean, my dear, and have a little song. Hi, Nelly. Oh, Nelly, listen, love, to me. I'll sing for you, play for you a delta melody. <laughs> How do you make them go fast, laddie? See now, little sister. Please, can I make them speed? I imagine they're pretty tired after a long day in the field. And this is a heavy load of hay. I guess you're right. When I get out to the enchanted forest, I'm going to ask the princess to give me two fast white chargers. And we'll ride across the forest moonbeams like the wind. Giddy up! Easy now. You think you better wait and ask the princess? She's beautiful when she sits on her throne in the enchanted forest. Who is? Why, the princess. Oh, yes. You don't believe me. Sure I do. Sometime I'd like to meet her myself. The princess is going to give me a magnificent gold carriage. Lady! Lady! Get over, you fool! Sorry, Mr. Pryor. Why didn't you move over? Father, please. Can't turn a hay wagon as quickly as you can a carriage. Well, if you can't handle your horses, you've no business driving them. Now, wait a minute. The law gives the right of way to a man with a wagon load. A law or no law. Next time, you'd better look out, you country clodhopper. The Pryors aren't very nice neighbors, are they? Perhaps English people live differently than we do. I'm disappointed in the princess, too. Pamela Pryor. Is she your princess? Oh, what's the use of pretending? She isn't really a princess, but she looks like one. Yes, I've noticed that before. Now, girls, you mustn't be too hard on the Priors. Well, I don't know what Mr. Pryor meant when he said his wife was indisposed. Indisposed, nothing. I saw with my own eyes sitting in the upstairs window looking as well as I do. In the way Mr. Pryor and the princess drove by and left him standing on the porch. English people are very reserved, Sally. Well, there's a difference between reserve and downright impoliteness. Someone ought to tell them we won the revolution. Well, we did our part. We've been neighborly. Oh, Mother, you take the minister's sermons too seriously. And just think, I might have been out in the woods working on my nature studies. Where? At Peter Dover's farm? After all, romance is a part of nature study. Make her stop, Mother. Shelly. <sighs> to think we baked all those cookies for the priors, too. Don't worry. I'll see that they're not wasted. You put a hand on those cookies, Leon. Oh, just because you're all mad at the Priors, you needn't take it out on me. Mad at the Priors? Hm. I wouldn't go to all that bother. Miss Princess Pryor. You're jealous of her clothes. I am not. Wouldn't be as stuck up as she is for the world. They tried to run us down with their horses. Maybe you wouldn't find she was stuck up if you tried to get acquainted with her. How are you going to get acquainted? Even at church, she only speaks to the minister. Does Pryor go to church on Sundays? I can see where somebody's going to church Sunday. Here he comes, and he's got him. They're beautiful. There you are, Mother, a gift from your loving husband. Well, I wish Peter could see them. Now we can all go to church in real style. Can I drive him to the barn, Father? Sure, son. Don't drive too fast and handle him gently. Come on, Sarah. Come on. <laughs> we'll certainly put the Pryor's eyes out. And speaking of the Pryor's, you should hear the way they snubbed us today, Father. They almost ran us down. Just who do they think they are? Mr. Pryor was driving like mad. I want to talk to you, little sister. Watch me now. Oh, you don't want to be a clucking hen like Shelly and Sally, do you? No, but I like to listen. That's good. You should do as Mother does. Listen a lot and don't say very much. I want to ask you to do me a favor, little sister. 
Sure, Maddie. Remember you were telling me about your walks in the woods? And how you saw the princess in the enchanted forest? Do you believe in fairy tales? Can we pretend? I don't know. It's gonna be awful hard after the way she acted. Maybe I could think of another princess. No. No, I think I prefer this one. It's a shame, because I'm not so fond of this one anymore. Well, I am. I mean, if you should ever see her in your walks in the woods... You'd like to meet her? That's right. You want this to be kept a secret? An important one. Cross my heart. Hey! <laughs> Are you looking for me? Yes, Princess. I have a message. Thank you, little sister. Don't be afraid of me. Come here and let me kiss you. You know who I am? Of course. You're Pamela Pryor. And you're English. And you live on the farm next to ours. Is your mother really sick? Or is she just pretending because she don't want to see anybody? She really is sick. She has heart trouble. I'm sorry. But Mother will be glad to know that she's really sick because she thought... What? Not a very neighborly family, are you? No. We're not. You can call me little sister if you'd like. Thank you, little sister. Would you like a cookie? Yes, thank you. What are you doing out in the woods all alone? Looking for someone. Who? I... I guess it's you. After all, people do call you the princess. They do? They say, there goes the princess. But Laddie says, there goes the princess. Laddie says? That's my big brother. You saw him when your father almost ran him down. I'm sorry. My father's temper gets the best of him sometimes. Your brother's very nice. That it's all settled. What is? Why, he thinks you're nice. And you think he's nice. Now you both can see each other. I'm afraid we can't. I don't understand, grown-ups. They make things so mixed up. Perhaps you'll understand them when you grow up. 
But he wants to see you so bad. No. No, I can't. Tell him that he mustn't make any attempt to see me. Even at church? Even at church. Goodbye, little sister. Come on, Jay. We're expecting you for dinner, remember? Yes. Thank you, Mrs. Stanton. Mrs. Peter? Stanton. Hello. Hello, Peter. Are you going home from church? I always do. I was wondering if I could drive you home from church. You always do. Thank you. Sally. Laddie, I'm right glad to see you, Laddie. You know what's happening to me? My crops are being destroyed by a little red bug that leaves a scale that looks like rust. Well, that's too bad, Tom. I've been around here a long time, but I never saw a bug like that before. Hello, Princess. Little Princess. Pamela, I met her. I met her in the woods. How do, you do? How do you do? I've been hoping to meet you ever since that day you were kind enough to call. What would you do with a bug that leaves a scale that looks like rust? Try tightening it up and using a little axle grease. Huh? How is your mother's health, Miss Pryor? Oh, about the same, thank you. She was so sorry that she couldn't receive you that day. But your kindness to a stranger in a strange land meant a great deal to us. Oh, I was just trying to be neighborly. I know what it means to be away from one's folks. Here's another of my brood, Miss Pryor. My son, Laddie Stanton. Miss Pryor. Mr. Stanton. I must go now. Won't you come over and see us real soon? I will, thank you. I'm awfully glad to have met you. May I have the pleasure of escorting you to your carriage? That's very kind of you. Goodbye. 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 She's even prettier near to than she is at a distance. What did little sister say? Oh, she was very sweet. She merely said that she met me in the woods. I'm glad of the opportunity to meet you formally. Oh, I... I want to apologize for father's actions the other day. <laughs> Don't bother. But you see, in England, whenever he met any of the villagers on the road, they naturally stood aside and touched their caps to him, and he... Lord of the Manor idea. I understand. Oh, no. No, he was in the army and used to obedience. Oh, I see. Oh, but you must promise me never to mention anything about the army in his presence. All right. Pamela! Coming, Father. You did just right. You see, he must get used to not having his own way. I must go now. But when am I going to see you again? I don't know. Pamela! I'm coming, Father. This afternoon in the forest clearing at 3 o'clock? My, she's lovely and a real lady, too. The way her people have acted. Oh, I do hope that Laddie... Oh, now, Mother, don't stop worrying about Laddie. He has a good head on his shoulder. Well, many a good head has been lost over a pretty woman. Well, didn't I lose mine? <laughs> a lovely dinner. What one needs after a meal like this is some good exercise. <laughs> Wake me in an hour. <laughs> Thank you, laddie.
are you talking about? We're Sally and Peter. They're engaged. He kissed her right in the living room. What makes you think we're engaged? But Mother says when a boy kisses a girl, they're engaged. <laughs> Mr. Dover, oh, that, that's my name. Mrs. Stanton, that's your name. Well, Mr. Stanton, surely you cannot be unaware of the deep and tender emotion to which I, uh, I however unworthy, ha have been inspired by your daughter, Sally. I, uh, I uh, trust I'm not being presumptuous in, in hoping that uh, my uh, noble and honorable affections have not gone unrequited. Yes, Peter, go on. I assure you I will make you a good husband. Th that is, I mean, make Sally a good son-in-law. I mean, uh... uh oh... What he means is that he's willing to put up with Sally's cooking for the rest of his life. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I understand, young man. And you'll find Sally a mighty good cook. <laughs> Almost as good as her mother. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> when you get married and go away. And I won't never, never kiss you goodbye, neither. Hey, where are you headed for, young lady? I'm leaving home. I'm going out west to Pennsylvania and fight mm -hmm. Indians. That sounds like a pretty quick decision. Besides, Pennsylvania's east. Then we'll go somewhere else. Sally spanked me, because I told Mother she and Peter Dover were engaged. Oh, that's a shame. Are they really engaged? Uh-huh. I saw him kissing her. Who are the flowers for, laddie? I know. The princess. Right you are. Look, little sister. I wouldn't run away too soon if I were you. Just don't forget, when Sally goes, you have a whole room to yourself. Please, can I go with you? Now, wait a minute. All right. If you promise not to run away, you can come along. But remember, as soon as we get to the clearing, you have to turn and go home. Understand? Uh-huh. All right, come along. What are you going to say to the princess when you see her, laddie? I hadn't thought. You better. You want to say something more for us. Yes, I guess that's right. How about this? Fair lady, these flowers are put to shame by your beauty. That's pretty good to start with. Go on. The stars are no brighter than your eyes. The sun hides its head when you smile. There, how about that? Why, that's simply magnificent. He's pretty good myself. It's where you and I part company. Do I have to go? All right. Bye. Goodbye. if I kept you waiting. You haven't. I've only been here a minute. What lovely flowers. Yes, they are lovely. They're for you. That was very thoughtful. Yes. Uh, no, I mean, it was nothing at all. 
Yes? I didn't say anything. Is that why you wanted to see me this afternoon? Or are you a trifle shy? No, I, I've never been called bashful. I found that out at church. I had a world of confidence before you came, but now that you're here, I can't think of anything to say. You act like a young man meeting a girl for the first time. This is a confession. That's how I feel. I told you to go home. I couldn't mind let you hang there. Thanks. She was supposed to go home, but she didn't. I'm sorry, laddie. But I wanted to hear all the nice things he was going to say to you. What was he going to say? He said I'm coming over. I guess he must have forgot him. But you remember them, don't you? Oh, no, she doesn't. Yes, I do. You said she was more beautiful than the flowers. And her eyes were like, were like, uh... The stars. Why, that's love. That's just what I told him. Well, I guess I'd better be going. Oh, don't go. Goodbye. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye. I wouldn't be so cross. I think your family does wonders for you. Pamela, it's unfair to meet you under circumstances like these. Your parents mightn't approve. I should meet your father and mother. Oh, no. Why not? I'll be on my best behavior. It isn't that. I'd like to tell my father what a fine young man you are. You want him to get the country cloud hopper idea out of his mind. Laddie, can't you forget that? He's really a fine man. I'm sorry. Wish I could explain it to you. Something that happened to him in England. A tragedy that he's, he's never really recovered from. You'll be patient. Sure, I will. Thank you, Laddie. Goodbye. Goodbye. And I send you home, young lady. Anyone would think they're going to the wedding. Well, not exactly. They've still got to look their best. Why? Father told me I could use them to go over and pick up the princess. Is she really coming? Well, she's been invited. Sure, she's coming. Suppose her father won't let her. Well, I guess I'll have to kidnap her. You mean put a ladder up to her window and carry her away in spite of her wicked father? Just like the princess in the fairy story? I can't get her any other way. Laddie. Let me go with you. Oh, no. Not this time. Please. Hey, little sister. Come on and help me. You better run help Leon. Please take me with you. I said no. Come on, will you? Scoop.
Sarah doesn't think ten chickens are enough. Now she wants six more. All this work, and what do we get? The neck, the wings, and the part of isn't like to talk about. Sure. Well, it's going to be different today. I'll show them. Hey, aren't you going to help me? I've got to go kidnap somebody. But I've got a good idea. Tell me later. Well, young lady, and what can I do for you? I wanted to ask you something. Well? Are you going to forbid your daughter to come to the wedding with my brother? Why didn't he come here and inquire for himself? Oh, he didn't send me. He doesn't even know I'm here. You can thank your family for the invitation and express my daughter's regret that owing to a previous engagement, she will be unable to accept. Does that mean no? That means no. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, goodbye. Goodbye? by your father and an argument. He's somewhere around. Let's hurry before I find you've been here. Hmm. Now, miss, just what's all this nonsense about, eh? Oh! Oh, look! Pamela! Pamela! <laughs> well, I'll be hanged. So you did help him to kidnap her, eh? I did? Just for a moment. <laughs> and we wanted to keep this a secret. I don't care. I want to shout it from the housetops. You don't have to now. <laughs> oh, Sally, you look lovely, doesn't you? Oh, you look lovely. Sally. Wear this, please, for good luck. Then maybe I'll get married next year. Oh, here, Peter. Oh, I like you. Oh, now, girls, that's enough. You don't want to stop the circulation in their limbs. <laughs> well, I guess we're all ready. Pamela. Yes. Now, take your places. Come, children.
Dearly beloved, we are gathered together in the sight of God and in the face of this company to join together this man and this woman in holy matrimony. Into this holy estate, these two persons present come now to be joined. If any man can show just cause why they may not lawfully be joined together, let him now speak or forever hold his peace. Peter Lemuel Dover, wilt thou have this woman to be thy lawful wedded wife, to live together after God's ordinance, to love, honor, and cherish her? and forsaking all others to cleave only unto her so long as ye both shall live? I will. Sally Elizabeth Stanton, wilt thou have this man to be thy lawful wedded husband, to cherish and protect him in sickness and in health? Another piece? I don't know. I can chew, but I can't swallow. You know, you're pretty brave. I didn't think you'd come in on this with me. I thought you'd want to stay for the wedding. I saw her rehearse so often, I could have married Peter Dover myself without a hitch. That's 15 calls for you and 10 for me. Are you going? Might as well face the music and get it over with. Spanked on the engagement day. Spanked on the wedding day. Little sister! Leon! Little sister, where have you been? We've shouted our heads off for you. Sally wanted you to sit at the bride's table. The bride's table? That's what I get for listening to you. Come on, Sally wants to see you. Where is little sister? I won't go until I see her. Here she is, Sally. I... I'm sorry I spanked you. I didn't mean to hurt you. Really. You didn't. Just my feelings. Will you forgive me? Will you kiss me goodbye? I love you, honest. I'll miss you something terrible. And I'll miss you, little sister. Sally, Sally, everybody's waiting, including your husband, Mrs. Peter Dover. <laughs> Come on, Lucy. <laughs> This afternoon, when Sally and Peter were getting married, didn't you wonder how it would feel to stand up in front of an altar like this? With the minister saying, Pamela Pryor, wilt thou take this good-for-nothing man to be thy lawful wedded husband? I will. Laddie Stanton, wilt thou take this beautiful woman, who is entirely too good for you, to be thy lawful wedded wife. I will. I now pronounce you man and wife.
for you. You're holding up everything. Did you see what I saw? Leon, little sister. Well, did you think Sarah had forgotten all about you? I hadn't thought. Come on, sit down and get to work. Come on, come on. But, but we're really not hungry. That's right. With all the excitement, we kind of lost our appetites. Oh, it was only the excitement, was it? Well, you come along and start eating, and don't you leave a thing on your plates or I'll tell your mother. And I saved you some of the nice white breast meat. Daddy, we can't go through with this. We must. It's just your father you're afraid of, isn't it? Yes. But Pamela, how do you know what he's going to say? I know that he's even tried to keep me from going to church. He hasn't wanted me to meet anyone. Well, that may be just family pride. No one good enough for his only child. But I'm not it. You're not what? I'm not his only child. We never speak of it, but father lost a son in England. That's why we came to America. That isn't easy to get over. But don't you see, dear? That explains his whole attitude. He's afraid of losing you, too. Maybe. No, maybe about it. That simplifies everything. I'll just tell him that there's no danger because we'll be living practically right next door. No, Liddy. Yes, Pamela. Just did. I do love you. Please. Ah, Pamela. How do you do? Good evening, sir. Father, this is Larry Stanton. Yes, I'm aware of that. Thank you, young man, for escorting my daughter home. Just a moment, sir. I'd like to speak to you, if I may. You better go inside, Pamela. The air is getting chilly. But Father, I... And your mother needs you, too. What can I do for you? Oh. Mr. Pryor, I'm here to ask a very great favor of you. One that I do not ask lightly, and one that you may not grant without deep consideration. But ever since your daughter first honored me with her friendship, I've been anxious to meet you and to obtain your permission. Yes, yes. Uh, my daughter's already asked me about the church party. Unfortunately, she'll be unable to attend. That isn't what I was talking about. Well, what were you talking about? The truth of the matter is that I love her. What did you say? I love your daughter. And I'd like your permission to marry her. You'll marry my daughter? Well, it's ridiculous. Mr. Pryor. I don't wish to discuss the matter further. The idea is preposterous and unthinkable. I know how you must feel. But it won't be like losing Pamela. I even thought that eventually you might let me, in some measure, take the place of your son. My son? What do you know about my son? Only that you lost a son in England. If I did, what's that to you? Are you trying to mock me? No, sir. Well, I want no son, do you hear? If I did, I wouldn't choose a clodhopper like you, you impudent young yokel. You'd like to take the place of my son, eh? You and your upstart family? You leave my family out of this. Why should I? Haven't you been whining around here with your insolent suggestions? If you weren't her father, I'd... Get out! Get out! And if I catch you around here again, I'll have you thrown out. You farmer. My 
nice time. Pamela, I've been wanting to see you. I've been waiting every day in the forest clearing, hoping that you'd come. I've wanted to see you, too. Father hardly lets me out of the house. Buddy, what are we going to do? Pamela, we love each other. And that's all that really counts. Let's get married anyway. No. No, I, I couldn't do that without Father's consent. He's been hurt too much already. What happened to him in England made him a changed man. I wish we could change him back. Maybe he wouldn't be so infernally stiff-necked. Well, Laddie, you mustn't talk about Father like that. Did you hear what he called me? Well, he... He called you a bum. And I didn't like the way he said it, either. Laddie. Have you ever considered anything else? Like going into a profession? I considered it and rejected it. But you had the education. I know you'd make good. Why don't you try uh, politics? Or law? I've tried law. I worked a couple of summers in Chicago. Daddy, you never told me. I don't even like to think about it. Closed-in offices, stuffy streets, houses jammed up together, musty old courtrooms, digging into other people's troubles. Personally, I'd rather dig in the good, clean earth. What's the matter with farming anyway? Well, even your father owns a farm. Don't you see? Owning a farm, working one, well, there is a difference. Oh. A farmer isn't a gentleman. Not exactly. But I thought if you could do something else, well... Why didn't you mention this before? You knew what I was all along, and it never seemed to make any difference to you. Now you want to change me. You want to change everything about me. Trust your work, Laddie. It's only because of father. But look, Pamela... I must go, Laddie. I don't dare stay any longer. But think it over, will you? Please. You'll make things so much easier. For what we are about to receive, may we be duly thankful. Amen. Sarah, bring the coffee. Did you wash your hands, Leon? Yes, Mother. Mm -hmm. Did you tuck your napkin in your neck? Shelly, pass Leon the milk. Father. I was talking to Wilson at the bank, and he told me that that 40 acres adjoining our West 80 is for sale. Well, that's part of Pryor's land, isn't it? Yes, sir. And I want to buy it. You do, laddie. Yes. I've saved enough money. Anyway, someday I'll want a farm of my own. What's happened, son? Nothing much, Mother. Yes, there has, too. I asked Mr. Pryor's permission to marry Pamela. Laddie! Oh, Laddie, I've just lost Sally. Don't worry. I was told that a farmer wasn't a gentleman. Well, I never. What about your father? He's been a farmer for 30 years. I think I'll step over and have a few quiet words with Mr. Pryor. This is my row, Father. But if Mr. Pryor thinks he can make me ashamed of what I am, he's badly mistaken. I'm going to buy some of his own land and show him that it was put there to grow crops, produce food, and make money. We'll show him. Sit down, little sister. Good luck, son. Thank you, Father. Eat your porridge, little sister. Charles, you must consider Pamela's future. I'm looking after her future. But not her happiness. You don't realize how you let this trouble prey on your mind. I never think of it, I tell you. That's all you do think of, Charles. Remember, he was my son, too. But we also have a daughter, and I don't see why her life has to be ruined just because Robert got into trouble. Good morning, Mother. Good morning. Father. Good morning. Bringing in the sea, bringing in the sea. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the 
Who is it making that infernal noise? Can it be Thomas? Thomas went to town early this morning. Bringing in the sheep, bringing in the sheep. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheep. Sowing in the morning, sowing seeds of kindness. Confound the audacious young puppy. He's actually plowing on my land. Impudence, Charles, please. Father, that land was for sale. He might have bought it. Where would a bumpkin like that get the money to buy land? I'm going out there to shut him up, so he'll never sing again as long as he lives. Oh, Mother, it's all over. He's ruined it. Now, darling, you know your father. Not father, Laddie. Laddie's ruined everything. Bringing in the sheep. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in you young whippersnapper! Whoa. Take those horses off my lambs. I'll set my dogs on you. You know what your dogs will do? They'll eat right out of my hand. I've been feeding them for months. You've what? I've made friends with them. Making friends is easy. Wouldn't you like to try it? This is the last straw. You... you... Clodhopper? Get off my land! I'm on my own land. I bought it from the bank. The bank doesn't own it. The deed's got to come from me, and I won't sell to you! Now, get out. Mr. Pryor, this land is the whole difference between you and me. That's why I wanted it. I wanted to show you the real meaning of it. That's good land. And it should be growing crops. And you've never put a plow in an inch of it. Wait. You need us farmers to produce the very food that you eat. I pay for what I need. And you need what we grow. We can get along without you. But you can't get along without us. The other night you called me a farmer. And I want you to know that you're right. I am a farmer, and I'm proud of it. I've plowed straight furrows, and I've sowed good seed. I've watched my crops grow. I've gathered in my harvest. And I know that there's no finer thing a man can do on this green earth. Well, perhaps you're right. Oh, poppycock, I don't care what you are. I wasted enough time listening to you. Now take your blasted horses and leave at once. Otherwise, it'll be the worst for you. This land's no longer for sale. Now, Charles, try and finish your breakfast. I'll give you a fresh cup of tea. What did he say to you, Charles? My dear Anna, he stood up to me. What are we going to do now? I wish I knew. Maybe the princess would appreciate you calling on her. By now, she probably never wants to see me again. You're wrong, laddie. Here she comes. Laddie, how could you have done such a thing? You must have known that it would spoil every chance that we had with Father. I didn't know we had a chance with him. Well, we haven't now. He'll never forgive you. What do you want me to do? Play doormat for your father to walk over? Oh, I just wanted you to wait and have a little patience until we could try to work things out. We might have found a way. I suppose I could have become a gentleman. Well, what have you gained by this plowing exhibition? At least I've shown your father yes, that I... Yes, you've shown him. You've shown him that you're just as stubborn as he is. Pamela. Aren't you going to marry her, laddie? It's the other way around, I'm afraid. She isn't going to marry me. But, laddie, that will spoil everything. Yes, it will spoil everything. There isn't anything I can do about it.
first, Laddie? I know a way. You do? Really, I do, Laddie. For ever so long, I've been saving up a great, big, powerful prayer. What? A powerful prayer. The kind way you talk to the Lord, like he was standing right in front of you. And you have to get down to business and work at it. You know, the way Father prayed when Mother was so sick last winter. I remember. I almost said one like that at Easter, when I wanted to find more eggs in me on. Only I didn't have to. And I almost said it at examination time. But I got through all right. And so I've saved it up. And I can say it now for you, if you really want me to, laddie. Powerful prayer. I'll do it right now. But you really have to want what I asked for. I really want it, little sister. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, I come before you this day to ask you to keep Laddie's heart from breaking. Like Mother's best picture when the cream froze in it on account of the way the princess is acting. I know that you've made every man different, Lord, so that each woman could tell which one belonged to her. But the princess don't, doesn't seem to know it. So if you'll just open her eyes to the truth, that Laddie really and truly belongs to her, I'd be much obliged. Thanking you for this favor, I am ever thine. Amen. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Lord, You've got the wrong man. Little sister. Don't. Please don't. He isn't the one. Why, what on earth are you talking about? Him. He doesn't belong to you. <laughs> but he does. He's my brother. Your brother? My brother, Robert Pryor. And he's come all the way from England just to see me. Robert. What is it? I just felt dizzy. You have a fever. Yes, I had it on the boat coming over. I must have got out of bed too soon. Oh, Robert. Little sister, run and tell your family that my brother's ill. All right. The Stantons are our neighbors, dear. They'll take care of you. John! Yes? John, I think you better go for Dr. Barnes. That poor lad's fever is getting worse. All right, Mother. Mrs. Stanton. Yes, dear. Mrs. Stanton, before you do anything more, I, I think that it's only fair that you should know something about Robert. My dear, he's a sick boy. That's all that concerns us. Mrs. Stanton, by my father's standards, my brother's past might almost be considered criminal. He was dishonorably discharged from the army. Doesn't that all seem unimportant at a time like this? Not to father. He was a captain in the service, following tradition of the prior. Then he was in line for promotion to major. And Robert got into trouble. Scandal prevented father's advancement. Then something inside of him seemed to snap. He hasn't been the same man since. He'll forget all that as soon as he realizes that Robert is back. Parents are a lot more tolerant than you suspect. You don't know father. Ever since he resigned his post, well, the importance of the army and the disgrace, it's grown in his mind to such a point Wait that... until you get him home. You'll see. Everything will change. No, I don't dare take him home. 
father swore he'd shoot Robert on sight. Shoot his own son? You mean he'd shoot him dead? Good land, you're always underfoot. Run out and play. But I don't want to play. Go on. Run along. That's a good girl. Stanton, I think I'd better ride over to get Mother. That is, if I can do it without Father's knowing. Of course, my dear, you run right along. Don't you worry about Robert. Thank you. should wear a red coat when you go hunting. But I haven't got a red coat. Have you? Yes. But you see, I didn't expect to meet another... another Nimrod out here. Nimrod's in the Bible. I didn't know you read the Bible. Father said he didn't think you did. What are you hunting? Tigers and lions. Would you like to hunt wild animals in the jungle with me? That might be a good idea. I haven't had much luck by myself. What kind of ammunition do you use? I use lion's tongue seeds on the lions and tiger lily seeds on the tigers. Well, that's very appropriate. Don't you ever bring down your prey? No. I don't like to shoot things dead. Do you? Yes, sometimes. Even people? Why, no. What gave you that idea? Even if you're awful, Terrible mad at them? Certainly not. In fact, you can take my word for it. Oh, I'm so glad, because Robert thought... Robert? Rabbit who? Robert who? Robert what? Robert Pryor. Where is he? Where is he? He's at our house. But you said you wouldn't shoot him. You said so. Wait! You haven't heard it all! Wait! I've got more to tell you! Mr. 
Get out of my way. I'm sorry, sir, but you're on the Stanton side of the fence now. Did you want to see anyone special? I've come to get... get my son. Not with a gun, I hope. That's my affair. I'm sorry, sir, but you can't enter our house armed. If you don't let me pass, I'll... You'll shoot me, I suppose. Like I understand you threatened to shoot your son. He was disgraced to his country. He was still your son, wasn't he? No. I disowned him. Then what are you doing here? What do you want with a son you've disowned? He doesn't belong to you anymore. And you have no right to him. Come right in, Doctor. Hello, Dr. Barnes. Hello, Lenny. Is it Robert that's ill? Yes. And he must be very ill. Her mother wouldn't have sent for the doctor. Just a moment. Gun. Pamela said that Mr. Pryor threatened to kill his own son. I'm sorry, Mr. Pryor, you disturbed the patient. Oh, but I've come to take my son home, Mrs. Stanton. He hasn't any home. I beg your pardon. He never did have one. A home is a place filled with love and understanding, where one can find protection and shelter in times of trouble. The house he lived in must have been just a monument of pride, and the door was shut in his face the moment that pride was in danger. I did what I thought was right. For yourself, maybe, but not your son. He was in trouble and you left him. And he had to face it alone. Well, he isn't alone now, thank heaven. Of course, we're just plain people. Farmers, Mr. Pryor. But Robert is welcome to stay with us as long as he likes. Do you realize what my son did? You know the story of the prodigal son, Mr. Pryor. He wasn't a very good boy either, and yet his father still loved him. And when he came home, his father ran to him and he said, this my son was lost and is found. Can you say that, Mr. Pryor? Yes. I can say that now. The room at the head of the stairs. Thank you. Your wife is up there, too. You don't believe in leaving anyone out, do you? Well, how is he, Doctor? Better, providing nothing upsets you. Is there anything I can do? No. No, everything's quite all right. Why don't you tell him you're crying because you hurt his feelings? Why don't you get down from there before you break your neck? But it's true, Laddie. You know I always cry when I make you feel bad. Will you just this once, please, keep quiet? No, wait. How did I hurt Laddie's feelings? Because you said you didn't like farmers, and he's a farmer. And my father's a farmer. My mother's been married to my father for 30 years, and she says she still loves him. Your father's a very wonderful man. So is Laddie. Why don't you tell him you're sorry? That's what I always do. I'm sorry, Laddie. Then I 
give him a great big kiss. Hey! Well, I guess that's all. <laughs> <laughs>